the Battle of Kosovo, fought in 1389 between the Serbs and the Ottoman Empire. The Serbs and the Ottomans have been fighting long and hard, many a wars, and now it comes down to this battle to decide the fate of these two nations. In history, this was a bloody Ottoman victory, but with neither side really getting a conclusive victory. But since the Ottomans had more men left, it was seen as a victory to them. The Serbs beat them bloody, and the Ottomans beat them bloody too. In today's battle, will we see a similar result, or will we have a decisive victory? And will Europe be changed once and for all? What's up guys and welcome back, I'm Pope John Paul and we're here with another 12-12 historical battle for you today. And this is an excellent battle, a very very close one, could go either way. And uh, like it did in nearly in history, it, the a battle in history, the Ottomans invade Serbia and fight at this uh, battlefield and they nearly lose. But the uh, Serbs just didn't have enough men and they, uh, well, fall back both sides lose their leaders, the Sultan of the Ottomans, I believe it's Murad I, is lost and I think it's called, he's uh, Prince Lazar, is the ruler, or the uh, leader of the Serbian forces and he also dies. Uh, but yeah, this is a battle set in by a member of the Discord, if you'd like to join the Discord to also send in your own replays or just take part in some scenario battles like this one or just some multiplayer battles with other Total War players, then hit the link down below in the description. Always welcome to join, always want new players to uh, interact with and share our Total War glory with. But as you can see here we have some Genoese crossbows coming up and they are the first to be hit by some of the uh, Janissary archers over on the far side by the uh, Ottomans. I think one of the uh, the Ottoman armies is actually a Seljuk of Rum army but it's uh, they're the same roster as the Ottoman forces, so it does not really matter at all. And uh, we do have some later period units then that would be at the battle, but that's the player's decision to use them. I know some people will be like, oh, this unit wasn't there and stuff like that, and yeah, that's fine. We can't always get scenarios 100% accurate, um, but it's, it's still an excellent battle, whether it's uh, historically quite accurate or not. I don't think anyone's ever got historically accurate 100%, uh, but we try our best. We try our best. And you can see here the Mercer Genoese crossbows firing against some more Mercer Genoese crossbows. It is a Genoese crossbow civil war. And I mean, one side's going to get paid. Whichever side wins will get paid. The others are going to get, well, butchered and will never get paid again. Uh, it looks like we have a huge amount of cavalry and infantry in this fo forest over here. And, uh, well,. I have a feeling these guys are going to have a major part to play. We've got some Nafatoons as well. We've got three Nafatoons on this side alone. Uh, whether there's Nafatoons at Kosovo, I don't know. But, um, well, if there were, there are here more now. Um, I mean, it's it'll be interesting to see how they can change the battle. They can break just like enemy lines with their explosives. But looks like we're going to have a charge out here by some uh, cavalry of the Swe uh, Swedes. I was about to call them the Serbs. <laughs> if the Swedish were here, that would be very bizarre. But yeah, the Serbs are coming. They're going to ride down these Genoese. Is there actually a response by the Ottomans? No, they're pretty slow to respond. And here come the Serbs. And they're going to run down these crossbows. The, maybe these ones won't be paid today. And uh, yep, they've been, been cut down. They maybe have those huge shields, but that wouldn't stop them being run down by uh, cavalry. And it looks like the same is going to happen on this side. And we've got some uh, more cavalry coming up. Are these ones going to get caught? I don't know. They're not going after crossbows either. They're going after the Janissary archers. I don't think they're going to make it because they weren't as decisive. I think they saw they needed to do it exactly at the same time because, uh, well, they saw what happened to the crossbows on that side. They need to, uh, and they were able to prepare with these uh, Turks on this side. I mean, I definitely, if I was the Serbs, be focusing down this flank a lot more. I know there's a lot of shock on this side, but the sheer amount of cavalry on this side is frightening. They're going to have to defend a lot more on this side and be more aggressive on this right hand, right hand side for them, left for the Turks. And it looks like they're going to try again. They're going to send out some more cavalry because they can see the uh, archers are trying to come out in front again. They're going to try and do it. I mean, it's gold chevron unit, so they need to look after it. They need to look after this unit and uh, yeah, there go the archers again. 
It seems a bit of cat and mouse going on. It's the same at the, uh, at the north of the battle there. There's some cavalry, which are going to get chased down by some Serbs. They might actually catch these guys. I mean, this is some very powerful cavalry. This is C for cavalry here. No, nope, they've, uh, they've decided it's not worth it, and they're going to fall back. But yeah, this is a 20,000-man battle. Uh, as you can see there, there's that's 10,000 on each side. And uh, so they could be a little bit of, uh, like, jeeriness. I don't think they should be. It should be okay. But uh, if there is, then it's probably just down to that. But it's a huge, huge battle. I mean, there were actually about 40,000 Turks in the battle. And about, I think, around about 20,000 Serbs. Give or take a few thousand. So, I mean, they were massively outnumbered with the Serbs. About 2 to 1. I mean, Turks always outnumber people 2 to 1, though. But their armies are made of slaves and men that are fighting against their will. These men are good Christian men, and they're fighting for God and uh, their women and children that they're trying to defend from the invaders. So I expect the Serbs to fight a lot harder. It looks like we've got some uh, Solak guard archers. You don't often see these guys on the battlefield. Very colourful. And they're getting uh, riddled with arrows, and they're not dying. I mean, yeah, they do look awesome. And here's the rumble of cavalry coming up as well. And here comes the huge amount of cavalry. Look at this. That's five units of Sifa. There's another one there. And they've got more cavalry uh, hidden back here. I mean, these are um, decent bow cavalry as well. They'll fight well in combat. And it looks like here's going to be the first bit of combat. And it's going to be... It looks like this cavalry is going to go in somewhere. Maybe after these archers. But, I mean, they've got to be careful with the pole arms. The Italians on this side as well. There's just so many Italians in a battle that's not even about them. They just got to get involved in everything, and here you go. Looks like the uh, Turks are going to go in for a combat here against the Serbs. Oh, it's a good clash, but they need to be careful of the flank. The flank. Oh, no. And, yeah, they're going to get caught there. That is a nasty charge. They need to be careful. They're sending up infantry, lucky though. Here come the Turkish infantry. All you can hear is just the crunch, crunch, crunch of the ground beneath them as they move forward in their shield wall. And fire arrows. Oh, that's going to be good for morale. That's going to help the uh, cavalry, the Turkish cavalry in their, their fight there. And you can see the infantry going in. I mean, you can barely see the infantry because there's a sea of cavalry down there. And, I mean, cavalry fights are one of the more com most confusing fights ever. You just get crushed. You can see here, look at them. They're crushed between each other. And, yep, there's goes the infantry. They're going to catch out the pole arms. That's a really good, really good charge there. Catching out the pole arms, not allowing them to form up. You see the banners of Islam flying high. Is the Martelosas, the troops, the Greek troops are uh, getting ready. And that's going to be a good charge. Oh, the cavalry's going to catch these guys. And, yeah, they're still moving. That infantry's still moving. That is a devastating amount of work. So, yeah, if you charge into cavalry whilst you're also moving... And, the, well, if you're charging the cavalry and the cavalry is charging itself, yeah, that's going to do a lot of damage to your infantry. Uh, but the Serbs have actually gone into combat to try and deal with these these cavalry. Uh, whether the Seafers will be able to beat them, I don't know. But here you go. I mean, they formed a wedge formation, which is great, but you need to charge. But they're not charging. And now the Seafer cavalry is coming in. Oh, at least that one might have got a good charge off. I mean, these Serbian, uh, Serbian cavalry needs to be careful. And they're engaging so much stuff into like just two units here. And these two are able to flank around. They're able to do damage. They're wavering already the cavalry here. That's huge. It's 58 men still. Oh, that's going to be a good charge. This will be a good charge. And they've stopped to the K Turkish cavalry. Oh, they should win that one. Should the Serbs. Excellent. Excellent. Look at the officer there. He's like, for Christendom. For Prince the Tsar. But yeah, the main infantry battle has sort of begun now. It's uh, still a bit bitty, and it's not a fully, like, fledged front line, a glorious front line yet. But we've got our spears here. They're like the pavy spears of Serbia, almost. And they're defending against the Martelosas. They should do okay, to be fair. We've got some uh, pay it guard coming up now. Got some uh, Catalan company... Uh, Javis here. That'll be interesting. So we've got a lot of mercenaries here for the Serbians. Maybe it's to represent like other crusader, like crusaders coming to help against uh, the Turks. I don't know, but they need to be careful. They're throwing their Javis point blank range, and they certainly need to be careful. They could just throw into the back of their own troops. 
They want to go like over here and throw Jarry's into these pair guard. They're like very, very easy to kill. They've got no uh, spears. Oh, no, no spears, no shields. Over here, it looks like we've got the uh, the Yaya here. So this is a light spear infantry unit. They're fighting against, uh, well, a medium spear infantry unit of the Serbs, which I won't even dare pronounce. So you imagine the Serbs should win that. But I've seen the Yaya do miracles. This light spear unit is not to be uh, messed with. I've seen them like rack up kill sometimes. And now it looks like the main infantry line is going to happen. And they're being aggressive on this side. Like I said, they should be the Serbs. Look at this. There's a huge sword line against Spears. You'll win that fight as a, as a Serb, I reckon. If they're going to be slow sitting swords up. And they don't have enough swords, really. I mean, they might do. They just, uh... I've got them in archer form as well. The sword and archer unit. And there we go. You can see as the clash begins. And they just interlock with each other. And they just go into combat. And that's glorious. And yeah, this pair of guards now wavering already. I mean, this side is absolutely... M chaos. The cavalry like fight over here is just absolute manic. People seem to be just winning and losing at different points of this. Like, and the uh, infantry now, like the shock infantry has gone in. That's good. I mean, it's tier 1 though against tier 3. So uh, whether that's going to help, I don't think so. Usually you want to be bringing highest tiers possible. If you've got, unless it's a scenario and you're like, like we're bringing a certain tier unit um, you want to bring like tier 3 every single time. Or most times anyway. I mean there are some good tier 2 and some good tier 1. But not many. If you're fighting a tier 3, you want the best stuff possible. And you can see what I mean. It's a little bit jittery. I do apologize. But uh, mainly just because of the sheer amount of troops in this area, I think. We've got Marslos is now going in. They're going to trap these uh, shock infantry. It's not from getting a good charge off on those... Uh, Guard archers that are now running away. And the Nafatoons are coming up. The Nafatoons are coming up. Well, if these guys are coming up, that's a really bad sign for the Serbs. I mean, they seem to be doing quite quite well. They're breaking or, like, forcing a lot of the Turkish cap to lose decisively. But say they're having more success on that far right than, uh, or the far, well, their right and not their left. That's just my opinion. Oh, jeez. Explosions. And fire. That's well, that's the Nafatoons for you. Um, they are causing absolute havoc. Look at these guys. Absolute madness. Just not want to be in there at all. I mean, they need to just throw their other, like, volley because, I mean, they. Or at least they've at least got two more volleys in them. They throw theirs over here. Looks like they should be. They've got fire arrows going off as well. Oh, come on. What are they going to throw? Oh, this cavalry needs to be careful. Needs to be careful. This Nafatoon's unit. They're a really good unit, but they will not fight well in combat against just about anyone. Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to get run down by this cavalry. The Serbs here have got them. They're, they're fought at the mercy of the Serbs. The Serbs don't show mercy. No, oh, maybe they're not. Maybe they, they've gone well on. Look at that. I didn't even see that. I didn't know those guard archers could form square. Well, that's very cool. And yeah, they've gone after the Nafatons. Oh, they're going to murder those guys. And the general for the Serbs has gone in there. Or one of the generals. Yeah, those Nafatons are... Uh, they're pretty dead. You can see one of them down there. He's, uh, he's not getting out alive. But yeah, it looks like the main center. It could go either way. Uh, a lot of wavering. I mean, look at that. A unit of 159 wavering. How is that possible? It must be like fire arrows or something like that. They haven't lost a general, have they? No, they haven't lost a general. But this cavalry fight here is certainly looking very uh, close. I mean, they're winning on this one. Not so much this one. I mean, they're breaking some uh, some Yaya, but that's just Yaya. Who wants to... No one worries about that. Is there a Sultan in here? No, they just, uh, they have a unit that looks, oh, it's these, uh, I think it's these heavy shock here. No, it's, um, no, they do. Oh, they have the Sultan in here. 
The Sultan is actually in here. Well, that's a big risk. He may die like he did in history. Sultan the first here. Sultan the first. Sultan Murad the first. Sultan the first. The first Sultan would be Osman. I mean, they're sitting in pole arms. This is a bit scary. They need to be careful. They need to be careful. Oh, and he's... <laughs> That poor guy just like stood there for ages and just went, oh, I'm dead. And yeah, I mean, it looks like... It's just their flanks are exposed. I don't think they lost their general. I'm sure it would say if they lost the general, but they need to be careful. They're sitting there, Sultan, to die at that risk. Oh my gosh, a lot of breaking there by the Turks. A lot of breaking there. And they've kind of mopped up a lot of this cavalry. What happened? I thought they had like a huge amount of cavalry available to them. Oh, a really good idea would be to put the Nafatunes in the middle of this square. You could not stop them then. And look at this. They've got halberds coming up. And they're going to just try and like poke these guys to death. Look at these Italian mercenaries. They're going to just poke the square to death. You form square, we'll just bring up the big pokey boys. Martelosa's in here. Fighting hard still. As always. These spears have held the line for ages. They've done so well. Maybe they're uh, rethinking their alliances. Like, we've just been recently conquered by the Ottomans. Maybe we want to change sides. We want to unconquer ourselves. A general has been killed. It was that one up there in combat. It's because the pole arms are in there. He's just charging against pole arms. He needed to get out of there. Oh, no, that's not good. I mean, he could have got the Serbian general. He was up for grabs as well. He's there now. Um, but, I mean, this army's now in a state of it trouble. I mean, as you can see, a lot of units already starting to waver, and they're fairly fresh. Something that one, 152 men, and it's wavering. And they're going to charge and deal with the rest of this cavalry now. And shock infantry breaking here. This is so fresh, shock infantry. It's actually fighting skirmishers, and they're wavering. And here comes this. Here comes the uh, despot of Serbia. I mean, I, think, I feel that's what they call him, isn't it? they call this guy? Serbian despot, yeah. I wonder why despot? I mean, I guess he's sort of a... It's like an eastern name for a king, I guess. But yeah, they're bringing up even more Martelosas. We've got the uh, Janissary swords now in com... Or, like, archers. They need to get a unit in between there. That'll be a good gap to get stuff through. I mean, they still got plenty of reserves now that they freed up this flank here. Especially a lot of cavalry. And, uh... I don't think the Turks have any cavalry left on the side, apart from this one unit, which is now stuck in combat here. They need to send the pole arms back in. They'll, m uh, they'll mess up those, uh, those cavalry. But it is an absolute mess over on this side. The lines aren't even, like, regulated. It's just fight wherever you can. It's actually going to end like the actual Battle of Kosovo. And it's going to be... Who's got the most men left can claim victory. Because they're just absolutely destroying each other. These Peart Guard now coming in. They need to send their helpers in certainly to the... Uh, to the Ottomans. Certainly to influence the battle. They have so many as well. Literally they have like four going around that corner. Up there. Wavering units here, 101 and it's wavering. These archers, the Genoese are desperate just getting on volleys. They're just like, quickly fire, fire anything. The cavalry here is just doing like cycle charge after cycle charge. This will be a good charge into the side of the shock infantry. Oh, no. They slowed down. They stopped, in fact. They needed a charge. Go into the side of these uh, shock infantry. Do some damage. Oh, they're going after summon. They're going after uh, the archers over here. That's not a bad target either. Whether they'll beat them, I don't know. Yeah, their carries all also just finished. I mean, their naphtons here are uh, breaking. The spear's holding, though. Oh, they've thrown more Nafatoons. The 
These Italians are just like, God, we better get paid at the end of this. And it better be a big bag of gold. A huge bag of gold. I mean, you can see here, more wavering. Have they lost their general on this side, I wonder? Yeah, I think they have. I think, yeah, he has. He's, he wavered and broke on this side as well. Oh, yeah, the Turks are in trouble. They've lost both their generals. And if you lose your general in 1212, you're in trouble. You need to, like, then start focusing down that other general, the opposing general. Otherwise, you're in trouble. Your morale just, like, it's destroyed. And, yeah, you can see here, look at this. Martelosa, a unit of 146, is losing. Well, it's wavering. Just because the general's been lost. It's also been surrounded, but these petty guard need to go in there. They just need to send everything in now. Just... It's all to the wall. I mean, they've got very little cavalry left. This is the final units of cavalry. And I thought this, I thought this Serbian flank over here was done for. It was an absolute hammer blow by the Turks against them with the amount of cavalry here. But no, they've held on. They've done a good job. Pay guard here, fighting off against some of the Italian mercenaries. I love the pay guards like Halberd. It's like a proper axe. With a point on the end. Yeah, they're getting focused down. This angle that these crossbows got here, I mean, they're obstructed. I mean, a fair few of their shots are still getting through, and they're just chipping away at all these uh, pay guard in here that are holding the line. And same with these, uh, these janitor crossbows. You can see here, all of these janitor crossbows just getting held up by arch, um, not by archers, by pole arms. They're going to get poked to death. Get poked to death and die. And then there you go, the Solak guard archers. I keep forgetting what their name is because I never see these guys. Everyone you, seems to bring the janissaries. But uh, yeah, the Solak, the Solak uh, guard archers here. They're just getting impaled on pikes or halberds. That's what happens when you form a square. They'll either shoot you to death, or they'll uh, just poke you to death. I mean, it's a good formation, it just needs to be used in the right situation. And you can see here, the center of the uh, Ottoman armies is gone. It's now down to these flanks over here. I mean, the Serbs are still wavering in some areas. How many men have been lost? Wow, the Serbs have lost about 3,000. And the Turks have lost, have about 3,000 left. They've lost, getting on for 8,000 men. That crush would be so claustrophobic. That is a huge... If you're at, like in the middle of that, you're just like, Oh God, I can't go backwards, I can't go forwards. I'm just standing here. I wonder if the uh, Orthodox Serbs would be chanting Deus Volt. I mean, it's not, they're not on crusade, but they are still Christians. They might be like, God wills it, God wills it, as they kill every single Turk. Kill a Turk, Deus Volt. Kill three Turks, three Deus Volts. Kill 10,000 Turks, 10,000 Deus Volts, possibly. And this cavalry, I mean, come in, charge down these uh, crossbows. They are not getting paid today, these Genoese. They're wavering. A unit that does so well. In uh, melee as well, but it's just been charged down because of uh, the general. Well, charged down because of cavalry, but it's wavering so early because of the general. That's what I meant to say. But uh, yeah, it looks like yeah. There you go. The Seljuk Rum force is gone, fully gone. It's now down to the Ottomans, who are going to hold here in this like tiny enclave that they've held on to. They've actually made a hole, a sizable hole as well. They need to swarm troops through. But as long as the Serbs keep their uh, generals safe, they should be okay. If they don't, then that's them being fools. Oh, 
Oh, that's a good charge there by the cavalry. I didn't even see that coming. Yeah, so now the cavalry's doing hammer and anvils. And it's just routing each one of these units individually on its own. They just routed two units there. I mean, you can see this whole flank. Every time the infantry gets too close and it's starting to overwhelm, units are breaking off for the Ottomans. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what they did wrong. Um, maybe they could have done with sending the halberds earlier. Because the certainly on the left flank, the Serbs sent in their halberds a lot quicker. And they had to... Like, their cavalry, some of their cavalry got freed up. They needed to go after infantry, charge down infantry. Maybe even go after generals. I know that the uh, generals, like, sniping's, like, a terrible crime and stuff like that. But if it's, like, how you're going to win the battle, then you, it's, it's a worthy it's a worthy tactic. Yeah, the cavalry and the infantry unites, and it's going to try and route this final defense of cavalry from the Ottomans. We're holding the flank now to allow the Ottoman infantry to fight on. But uh, it's not wanting to hold, fight on whatever happens. I mean, I'd send these, uh, these janitory archers in. Just get them in combat. They've either got, either got to go and support their cav over here, or they've got to go to the front line and support their halberds. And Serbia's not got a care for life of his men now. He's just charging them in against the Payet Guard. They gained the upper hand a little while ago, sir, but uh, I'll take your word on it. Yeah, the Serbs did a good job. They defended this hill very, very well. And, um, well, well, I mean, the bottom of the hill, really. But uh, I thought this side was going to break. It was just... In so much trouble, so many issues. But it is going to end in a uh, in a victory for the Serbs and for Christendom. So we are going to change history here today. As a charge from the Serbian cavalry comes in. And this is going to just probably probably rout these guys. It'll be interesting to see how many kills the Serbian cavalry has got. Yeah, how are they not routing? I mean, that's very impressive. Here you go, they're going to get charged by infantry. Cavalry again, who knows? Yeah, all this uh, infantry is losing decisively. That is insane. And they're but they're winning on this flank. The Payet Guard is winning against the Italian mercenaries. There is some small glimmer of hope, I guess, with them winning. Or just one last uh, small victory in a much greater defeat. I would think it's the latter. There is no hope. Even if they are guardsmen, they can't defeat this entire army. If they had a general to guard, they may have a chance. But uh, no, probably not. And the general's coming around now. He's probably going to try and do a hammer and anvil on these uh, pit guard. They might just break even before uh, they get to do it. Oh, here they go. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful and disgusting. And a close victory there. That last charge on the pit guard, breaking the back of the Ottoman forces. So I'll end the replay, have a look at the end results. So this was sent in by Sacek, who's playing as one of the Serbian players. So uh, well done to him. And... Uh, Thank you for sending this in. It's a great, great replay. Um, so have a look at some of his uh, results. Um, his general getting 55 kills. His uh, axeman for a tier 1 unit getting 129 kills is not too shabby. Um, his uh, spears getting 85 kills. I think the best one. His Italian mercenaries getting 106 kills. His uh, swords, uh, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce. I think the best one there I can see is 157. Um, but they did excellent. I mean, he spammed these guys out. Well, they did really, really well. Um, and then his uh, Genoese crossbows, who are going to get paid, they survive, so they will be paid. 146 kills. His Catalan company, which is also like the mercenary unit, getting 184 kills and 141, so, uh, so they did well as well. And then his cavalry, the best one there, getting 329 kills. So that is very nice. Then uh, Jacao, who was playing as uh, the other Serbian force, 147 kills with his general. His uh, axe only getting 96 kills, but still pretty good for a tier 1. His spear is getting 132. His uh, 
Italian mercenaries 100 kills and then his best sword unit getting 188 and uh, he brought some archers which got 118 kills his uh, crossbows getting 175 and his gold chevron cavalry did not do as well as Sachex's but it, because it, mainly because it was fighting like the Sefer but he got 152 kills 167 which is the best two there and then we have Obama, uh, Obama Bin Laden uh, what a name I guess um uh, playing as the Ottomans, uh, he got 105 kills with his heavy infantry. Definitely could improve them. They are a really good unit. Uh, can get a lot of kills. His Yayas, uh, yeah, they didn't do well. They were fighting like the Spears. So they were going to get massacred. His uh, other Spear units, he got, uh, well, no real kills. I think he needed to bring less Spears, more swords. Certainly more Martelosas. He bought uh, Payet Guard here, 142 and 100. I don't know whether this much Payet Guard was needed, but uh, who knows. His uh, Martelosas high, only got 19, but the rest... I mean, only got 78 was the best one. His uh, Janistry Archers got 57. If there's a limit on these guys, um, that's fair enough. But if not, then you should have brought more of them instead of like these Spears. They, because they're just so much better. Um, his uh, Genoese Crossbows getting 114 kills, which is okay. But they won't be getting paid because they died. Um, his Cephas only getting 59 kills, which is a shame because it's a really good Cav unit. And his um, uh, uh, Horse Archers only getting 42 and his... Uh, Nafsin six kills. Then we have uh, Giorgio da Greek, uh, well, da Greek. Uh, don't know why I had to do some random accent there, but uh, his heavy infantry getting 121 kills. His pay at guard getting 124. Um, his martelosis, which are all high apart from like two, getting uh, that's only like 26 kills. They did really poor. Should definitely not should brought like the martelosis late uh, instead of these guys. Um, his janissaries. Getting 48 kills. His uh, so that guard arch is only getting 75 kills. I mean, I don't know how good they are. This is the first time I've actually seen them in combat, but they could definitely do with getting more kills. I think with a name like guard archers, could definitely do with getting more kills. And this C for cavalry, uh, getting 209 kills is not actually too shabby. And one of his uh, Naftunes getting 193 kills, which is not too shabby either. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's battle. If you did, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here. And leave a comment if you've got any 12 12 scenarios that you'd like me to uh, try and recreate, or you just enjoy the content and you let me like me to know. Uh, but until next time, Legionnaires, I will see you in the next one.